you for checking us out. Today we're going to talk about Honor Fakana's latest uh, article where they talk about, again, more subclasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, Wizard of Coast, you're not making enough unique stuff. Wizard of Coast like, here's four new ones, guys. First month. <laughs> Part one. Which means how many more parts are we getting? How many more of these you guys already have planned, you crazy psychopaths? Yeah. So we're <laughs> going to talk about Barbarians, um, Path of the Beast. Yes, Path of the Beast. And you had very specific thoughts on that uh, <laughs> when we first walked in. I'm, I'll be honest. It's okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really amazed by it. I, I don't know what's up with me. I'm just Lately, I'm just not excited about... <laughs> Stuff that's coming out about classes nowadays. It's just it's not different enough for me to be like. And that's saying, why you yeah. have me here because I'm the one who's like <laughs> I have really crazy ideas whenever I read stuff like this. <laughs> the the last one they did on Barbarian, which I haven't put up the video yet. I'm sorry. Um, about um, where they get their power from the Fae. Uh, the um, Wild Soul. Yeah, that to me is interesting because it's so different. Yeah. So I I will agree with you that I will say my biggest issue with this. And it's not really a big issue. It's Path of the Beast means taking on bestial shapes of some form. The issue with that is you have so many anthropomorphic uh, races already. So you have the Loxodon, who are giant elephants. You have lizard folk, who are giant lizards. You have dragonborn, who are giant dragon people. Um, The the cat people from... The the, uh, tabaxi. You have shifters, which are like basically this, but as a race instead of as a class feature. But I think when you start crossing stuff over, it gets you can make it super unique and fun. So for me, one of my favorite races is the Tortle. I just love them. You get, I think it's either 16 or 17 AC automatically, and it never changes. It just never changes. Now, see, if you put this on it and you wanted to play Barbarian, uh, what if you were a Barbarian with two shields? And you had the bite attack or the tail attack. Mm. So you could still attack. And now you have crazy AC for no reason. Mm. <laughs> but you can still attack. But I, but I understand there are benefits. Like there's there's gains and like losses with a lot of this stuff. But I, one of the really cool features here is uh, you sort of get almost like a paladin aura. Where you get to give reckless attack to other people. Which think of that with your rogue. If yeah. you have a rogue in your group. Or your monk, and your monk is just like pun- doing all the punches to try to like break a mage's concentration or something. Yeah, you the, I, there are there. Don't get me wrong. I, the beast part excites me in some ways, but I agree with you. There's not too much. Yeah, it's not that meat. Yeah, not not uh, like you said. Like it's not that unique. Yeah. Um, I, I do like call the hunt. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is, it's, it's so late, like 14th level. By then, it's. I mean, there are so many other abilities and uh, your other group we have. I don't know. It seems like if it was like 7th level ability, I think I'd be more excited about that. Because that would That's really fair. change the dynamic of the game. But, I mean, think, okay, so I guess it is playtest stuff. So think of yeah. it like, think of one-shot purpose that you get it late. Uh, like, maybe you play late level one-shot. And, like, it, maybe just for fun. Like, you and your rogue are like, hey, let's make this really ridiculous combo for no other reason than just to piss off the GM. Yeah. You can have some fun with it. But I, yeah. I do get you. But, like, um, Infectious Fury is also fun. Oh, yeah, and Infectious Fury, you basically make one of your opponents either attack somebody else or they just take psychic damage if they don't want to or can't. And, mm-hmm. like, that's just a fun little thing to be, like, you're almost scaring someone away psychologically with, the, with like, whatever is going yeah. on with you. Yeah, and I think that's, to me, the most exciting thing about this whole the whole thing. The other stuff, uh, Form of the Beast, eh. <laughs> oh, I got claws. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, Oh, I could bite. I could do damage. All right, okay. I, again, I, who, who cares? Yeah, I, I think what it does is it also gives Barbarian, which, like, you can you think of, unless you take the Tavern Brawler feature, you don't, you never are, like, the physical fighter, like, like hand-to-hand. It's always Monk, and Monk's really the only one that can ever, like, hand-to-hand brawl with mm. people because you just never get the chance to do damage. But, like, with this Barbarian, with Barbarian, then you can even maybe twist it a bit. Like, again, homebrew, homebrew. I'm always up for that. Um... Maybe, like, having these claws means that you can make your Barbarian a physical pure fighter. No weapons. Just wants to crazy, like, go, go crazy on it. And I, and I agree, like, if you're if you're a fan of Wolverine or Sabretooth, like, maybe you've already made a character like that and you have, yeah. like, a better solution. But I think, like, you have the ability to make something interesting with it, which is nice. I would like to see if there's a problem with the rules overlap. Let's say I'm a Tabaxi mm-hmm. that has this ability, but your Tabaxi you have claw damage, as yeah. it is already. Well, how... Like I like to look at the rules and compare them side by side and see is that going to be a problem. True. 
Uh, but, if, it's, if it's one, if they have, I'm just gonna make a guess because yeah. it's been a while since I looked at, into the races. Um, if it does one d6 claw damage, but well, this gives you what another one d6 as one well. slashing, then the why does that? You know, it's like okay, maybe if you're a human, it'll matter, but if you're a tabaxi, exactly. it's not but, that point. But but if say you're a tabaxi, depending on the origin too, because you don't, I don't think you have to choose from these. It's just. You can choose it or you can determine it randomly. So depending on your origin, if you're a tabaxi, maybe it's not werewolf traits. Maybe you aren't getting claws. Maybe mm. it's something else that's mutating a different part of your body. Maybe instead of having the small teeth of like a tabaxi slash cat person, you grow large fangs. So now you have a bite attack, including mm. your slash attacks. Or maybe you grow like a stegosaurus tail or something and it has spikes. Who knows? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I would like to think that there's fun ways and like... After Ravnica, all the Ravnica races and stuff where, like, it's, like, the animal hybrids were, like, hey, we're mutating people and stuff, <laughs> and we're already doing this, this, like, the a little bit of flavor of where, like, hey, maybe there's a supernatural version as well as, like, the scientific version of getting these weird mutations going. I don't know. I, yeah. I agree that there is stuff to be missing, but I will make a character like this anyways just to play around with because I want to yeah. I, I, try I think it out. I would prefer this if it was, you know... Uh, I would prefer this like a, as an NPC or as a like I can imagine yeah. like all right your your characters are like uh, somewhere in the jungle or the tundra or somewhere and you see this group of like evil barbarians and they all have they're all following the path of the beast yeah. that would terrify me. See, so stuff like that is what I'll end up doing in my campaign where I'm like the only way I play test this stuff is I make NPCs that my characters run into and then they get to deal with it yeah. and then I get to figure out how well it works. If yeah. I kill all my players then I know it works really well. Yeah, yeah so, so yeah, I like I like the flavor of it. Yeah. You know, I just, it just technically I just don't find it. You don't know if it'll work for like a PC because I agree there might be something like that. Um, uh, the Bestial Soul stuff which I, again like we're talking about like Having stuff that helps you fight when you need to is really nice, but then there's also like the flavorful stuff of like Bestial Soul, where it's like, hey, now you have crazy jumping or your swimming speed is crazy. Which again, like if you're doing the like lizard folk or one of the other animal hybrid uh, simic hybrids, you already have some of these things. But there, the, I think there are ways you can make it more flavorful by like mixing that stuff. You're just a crazy mutation. Like yeah. I. It could be a fun way to play, but I agree. It would be nice if there's a little more something for those people who are already done stuff like this. Hmm. So, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, do you think this is a, a good class, a good subclass for, for your barbarian? Do um, you think this is better than the animal totems, which are also animal-based but very specific? Do you, is that is that more accurate to say... In taking animal characteristics, or do you think because it's bestial, it's a little different? Like, what's what's your comparison? What are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, let us know in the comments below, and have a great day. See ya. Watch your back.